بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم uh, good morning everybody uh, first of all I'd like to uh, thank you all thank the uh, organizing committee Dr. Habib in particular for having me here and I'd like to welcome the international speaker uh, all of them you're welcome in Saudi Arabia uh, you're here at the right time actually not in August uh, welcome Dr. Herbert I'm so happy having you here in Saudi Arabia now uh, it's really hard for me speaking uh, after the uh, the expert uh, uh, speakers and I'm supposed to give you uh, uh, posterior cervical from anatomy an update so uh, I decided to dig into the literature and just uh, look at this uh, subject and go through it over the last years and see what is the update in posterior from anatomy So we'll go through a simple introduction, then I'm going to go literature review, we'll talk a little bit about the techniques, and then we're going to go through the indication, contraindication, advantages, and the disadvantages of the posterior uh, from anatomy. So uh, talking about posterior from anatomy, it's the treatment for uh, a disease, which is the cervical uh, radiculopathy. Most of the time we treat this, we tend to treat this with anterior cervical discectomy and diffusion, as Dr. Herbert mentioned earlier. But there is uh, some sort of, I would say, a neglected approach, which is the posterior foramenotomy, uh, that also could help in, in some cases uh, with uh, uh, special indication when the patient is having uh, precise uh, clinical picture of uh, uh, pain that is uh, uh, along a very specific nerve route uh, with some sensory motor disturbance uh, if cervical myelopathy or if another nerve root were also uh, exist then the posterior foraminotomy might not be the approach uh, it could result from a soft disc herniation that goes into the lateral foramen or even from an osteophyte or a spondylysis in the foramen itself or secondary to a hard disc but it is in the foramen or it's in the lateral aspect of the of the canal not in the central canal now we tend to treat these things conservative and if surgical indication or if the, surg if, if the, if the conservative uh, management failed and the surgical indication comes, ACDF or posterior uh, uh, from anatomy. Now, talking about posterior from anatomy, we could do it through a posterior midline approach or paramedian approach or even lately with the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the last uh, 10 years, the new development of many, many invasive technique for, for anatomy. The, uh, the main... Uh, important part of this technique is to go into the interlaminar space, not to go beyond 50% of the facet joint, try to preserve the capsule of the lateral aspect of the facet joint, uh, expose the nerve root, and then try to retract the nerve root more uh, cranially rather than coldly uh, to expose the disc. Now, uh, talking about posterior from anatomy, take us back to the 1944 and 1947 when these two, when these, when this procedure was uh, initially founded, and that was by uh, in 1947 by uh, Frank Holmes and in 1944 by Sperling when they initially described this this technique and the management of cervical uh, uh, radiculopathy through the posterior from anatomy, and that lasts for 10 years until Smith Robinson. Uh, and Cloward in the 1958 when they, uh, pro when they, when they brought up the anterior cervical uh, procedure. Since then, anterior cervical became the co sort of the gold standard treatment for any uh, cervical radiculopathy, but people, and if you dig in the literature, there are lots of uh, researchers who always bring in the literature the importance of posterior foramen anatomy, and that was done by Henderson in 1983 when he brought back again the posterior foramen anatomy in publishing his paper in over 800 patients where he had only posterior foramen anatomy with an overall patient satisfaction of 91 with only 3% of recurrence rate. The 
uh, this was also published again in the 90s when Davis reported his 170 patients where, uh, where they had posterior foramen anatomy and he reported uh, a, a 15 years follow-up with an 86 percent uh, of uh, an excellent uh, outcome and less than 6 percent of the recurrence uh, rate. So going through the literature that were in 80s and 90s we see most of the literature, most of the paper were, were very supported to the posterior foramen anatomy in a very selected indication, though the anterior cervical discectomy still the winner in this, uh, in this game and still be the gold standard treatment for most of the cervical pathologies. In the uh, early 2000, uh, Adamson and Fessler uh, in 2001 and 2002 uh, they, they uh, report their uh, experience with minimally invasive technique in going into doing this posterior from anatomy through small incision with less muscle dissection and preserving the motion segments and they came up with a very good outcome uh, and, their, and their recommendation is to preserve cervical motion, lower incidence of complication, quicker return to activity. <clears throat> Again, in 2009, this also was uh, published an experience of a single surgeon with a minimum of five years uh, follow-up reported that the posterior foramenotomy is an effective or a very effective treatment for uh, cervical radiculopathy. This is a systematic review which, looked, uh, which looks at uh, uh, all of the literature that was published in the posterior foramenotomy and it proved that the cervical or the posterior from anatomy is an effective treatment uh, for lateral cervical disc replacement or cervical spondylysis with narrowing of the uh, lateral recess. And if you look at this carefully, there is always a very specific indication whenever you choose a posterior from anatomy uh, for managing your cervical radiculopathy. It, it, it preserves the uh, 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 motion segment and there is a theoretical advantage uh, saying that it decreases the chance of adjacent segment disease. Um, and they uh, conclude that the review of current peer-reviewed literature did not actually resolve the, whether the anterior or posterior uh, uh, surgeries would have a better uh, short or long-term uh, uh, result. Now, we're coming to the, okay, if this is the case, so what is the difference between posterior from anatomy and anterior cervical discectomy and fusion, there are, there are uh, a few RCTs published in the literature looking at this in particular and trying to compare these two. The, the first one that they looked at what was, early in the, uh, what was early in the 90s when, they, uh, when it was published by Her uh, Herkowitz and he reported that or he concluded that the uh, anterior cervical discectomy and fusion has a better outcome compared to the posterior from anatomy, though when you look at carefully to his paper, it was a very small number, uh, it was a cohort study, small size number, no validated outcome, and there was no blindness. Another RCT was also published in the, in the 2006, and uh, it also compared the uh, uh, ACDF with the posterior from anatomy, and there was uh, uh, there, there was a statistical significance in favor of ACDF over the posterior from anatomy, though the author reported that in particular indication, uh, both of them have an equi uh, more of an equivalent, uh, equivalent uh, uh, outcome. In 2008, this was uh, the latest uh, randomized trial that I looked at comparing the newly developed uh, 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 minimally invasive sort of addressing this problem through posterior, uh, which is posterior from anatomy, comparing to the uh, anterior cervical discectomy, and this paper actually proved that. And, and those, and, and the, the posterior from anatomy uh, is, an, is a, a very efficient uh, procedure for this particular uh, indication. When we, whenever you have a lateral disc herniation, uh, uh, a soft one, or whenever you have a spondylysis, a foraminal stenosis, only without any central uh, component. It offers the advantages of minimally invasive uh, intervention. Now, some other papers also were published 
to compare the posterior uh, from anatomy through the conventional technique or through the minimally invasive technique, and both of them favor the uh, intervention, uh, the, the, the endoscopic uh, uh, one being less, less blood loss, less time for hospitalization, a quick, uh, quick return to the usual activity. Now, I like this title that was published by a Brazilian uh, 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 surgeon who, who looked at this posterior uh, approach. Was it a neglected approach? Looking at all of these papers which support the pos posterior from anatomy, still we are seeing most of the spinal surgeons are moving toward the anterior procedure rather than the posterior from anatomy. And um, the answer to this is looking at all of these literature and be very specific in your, in your indication. If we're going to look at the advantage of the posterior from anatomy through reviewing all of these, it, 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 it offers less operative time, blood loss, no need for fusion. So we're not caring about uh, the, uh, the autograft or allograft or their complication. We're not caring about if the patient will have pseudoarthrosis or not, or if there will be any sort of implant complication. There will be less chance of adjacent segment disease. Here we're not a fusion, and definitely there is, the cost is much less. There is no implant, there is no bone graft, there is no cages. The, only, the, the disadvantage to this procedure is, especially with the open one, there will be more muscle dissection, which will increase the chance of neck, uh, neck pain. Uh, and this will be uh, sort of addressed by the minimally invasive technique. But I believe the most important disadvantage of this procedure, it's limited indication. So you have to be very precise in your patient. Your selection criteria has to be very precise uh, in order to get the uh, uh, best outcome. So whenever you have that kind of disc, with, uh, which is a soft one, or that uh, kind of uh, spondo spondylosis uh, that is only in the foramen, then this is, uh, this is a good indication for this procedure. Whenever the patient did not resolve with conservative treatment, the most important thing is that you make sure that the patient is not having any element of myelopathy. So when shall I avoid doing posterior from anatomy? Whenever there is a significant kyphosis, then the posterior from anatomy is not your uh, best choice. Whenever there is any form of mechanical instability, when the, whenever there is any sign or symptoms of myelopathy, whenever there is a sign of cord compression in the image, despite of his uh, normal neurological assessment, symptoms that are not that that doesn't go with the with the uh, clinical or, or with the picture or with the images, or whenever there is significant disc, the la large disc that you cannot get it through that. Uh, simple keyhole uh, uh, for, uh, approach. And whenever there is an axial neck pain indicating there is some sort of arthritis in that disc space where fusion could be uh, of a better option. So this is uh, also uh, show you that whenever the patient is in regard to the post-op deformity, when the, the post uh, uh, for anatomy uh, kyphosis, whenever the patient ages over 60 or whenever the uh, pre-op uh, uh, cervical uh, alignment is less than 10, which means that it's not neutral, it's more toward a kyphosis, or whenever intra-op or even post-op, when you need to go and do further laminectomy, then the chance of post-operative deformity and kyphosis is getting higher. So the things that we should always consider whenever we uh, uh, try to do a posterior from anatomy, clear selection criteria. You have to choose your patient very carefully. Do flexion extension views before the surgery to make sure there is no, for, no any form of instability. Expose only the medial half of the facet. Try to preserve the lateral capsule of the, of the uh, facet joint and try not to move uh, more than 50% of the uh, facet joint and careful hemostasis. You have to balance between using the diathermy and working around that, uh, uh, that critical uh, area. So in summary, it is safe. Posterior for anatomy, it is safe and effective treatment when it's indicated. And results are best whenever you have a unilateral, single level, with many, many invasive approaches. Recovery periods are short, and it's going to be a very well-tolerated surgical procedure. Thank you so much.